One more time, ready? One, two, three. How many of us here, your left thumb is on your right thumb? If you guys please raise your hand, left and right. Okay, thank you. How many of us here, your right thumb is on your left thumb? If you guys please raise your hand. Thank you. And how many of us here until now, you're still confused left and right? Raise your hand. <laughs> Don't have a huh? Alright, so let me tell you why. Uh, my name is Westy Chan. I am a certified NLP trainer. So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, in short, Human Psychology. So for the past seven years, I've trained more than 80,000 people across 15 cities. And I specialize in managing Gen Y, sales and persuasion, and NLP training programs. So many years ago, I was reading an article and it says this. It says that the way we arrange our thumb reflects our personality. So one more time, how many of you here, your left thumb is on your right thumb? You guys please raise your hand. Okay, because in that research, if your left thumb is on your right thumb, it is proven that in life, you are more emotional. That's what it is. That's a slow motion smile. <laughs> Alright, now not just that, because if your left thumb is on your right thumb, it's also proven that in life, in that article, it says that you're also more romantic. Okay, so now on the other hand, how many of us here, your right thumb is on your left thumb? You guys please raise your hand back on that. Okay, because in that research, if your right thumb is on your left thumb, it is proven that in life, you are more logical. And not just that, it also says that in the research, if it's right, it's on your left, you have a higher chance of being rich. You don't seem quite happy though. <laughs> <laughs> so you're given a choice, you're given a choice. Do you prefer to be romantic or rich? Rich. 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 Ah, what do you say? Both. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so let me do this one more time with you. Uh, all of you raise hands one more time. One more time, raise hands like this. So right now, when I count one, two, three, I want you to change. If just not left on top, now you change right. If just not right, now you change left. Is that okay? Okay, ready? So when I count one, two, three, you change. Ready? One, two, three, change. Okay, thank you. How many of us here after you change, you felt uncomfortable? If you have this reason, eh? feel awkward, uneasy. Okay, thank you. So question, when you change your thumb, you felt uncomfortable, right? So here's my question for you. If you change your thumb and you feel uncomfortable, what about when you change your life? Because I believe change could be sometimes uncomfortable, but I believe it's very necessary. So therefore, today, right, uh, knowing what I know, so I specialize in this one area called NLP. So big part of NLP is to help people to change. Everyone say change. Hey, come on, everyone say change. change. And for change to begin, and one thing that I probably learned from my gurus and mentors, anyone that I meet, so basically one important thing about change is this one thing called energy. Everyone say energy. energy. And energy comes from this one thing called <laughs> focus. It's about having the right focus. Now, just let me ask all of you here simple questions. Who thinks that your focus is good? Can you guys please raise your hand? Okay. Next question. Who thinks that your focus is okay, okay? Raise your hand. Who until now? Don't understand what I say. Yes, raise your hand. Okay, don't have a. Huh? So basically, uh, let's tune our focus a bit before we begin. Will it be alright? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want you to do uh, just a short activity with me. Is that okay? So basically, uh, I want to do something with me. So to begin with that first thing, um, I want to find a partner. Find a partner, find a partner, find a partner. Just find a partner, quickly. Just find a partner. Okay. Partner for the day, I like that. <laughs> Alright, so uh, before we start, say hi to your friend. Hi. You got a partner? Okay, who has no partner? Raise your hand. You got no partner? Okay, we got Derek for you. Is it okay to get Derek? Uh, are you okay with Derek? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so before we start, say hi to your friend. Hi. Say good evening to your friend. Okay, so later we're going to do a short discussion with your friend. So, number one is this. I want you to look in front and let's talk about this one thing called focus. Everyone say focus. Focus. So just to tune our mind because in regards of a jam outside and whatever that you have, so let's focus our mind for the next one and a half hours. Is that okay? okay. Alright, now, the first thing is this. I want you to discuss with your friend. The first thing is have a conversation with your friend later and share with them what's your purpose coming here today. Maybe just to learn about NLP or maybe just dropping by. I don't know. Later, later. Have a start yeah, later. So first is purpose. Hey, have you, have you, have you, wait, 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 wait. All right, number two is about your goal you would like to achieve this year. Okay, does, does goal, this word sounds familiar to you? 
Okay, does anyone of you here have a habit of setting a goal? January 2018, you buy a new diary, you get a new pen, you write down your goal. Some of you here might write, my goal for this year 2018 is to hit my goal that I set last year. <laughs> Got experience right there, right? Okay, so generally, what's a goal that you want to commit to make it happen this year? It could be life, it could be career, relationship, it could be finance, it could be health, anything. Would that be okay? Alright, so what's one goal? Now, number three is this. So basically, also tell your friend, what's your progress now? Positive, you're on track, or you're supposed to lose it, become factor, because it's negative. So share that with your friend. Would that be okay? So you share with them their purpose, second, goal, and number three, your progress. So now, between you and your friend, can someone call A, someone call B? Someone call A, someone call B. Decide, someone A, someone B. So A, someone B, someone A, someone B. Okay? Okay, A, A raise your hand and say yes. yes. Okay, B raise your hand and say I. I. Okay, so who talk first? A raise your hand, point to B and say B, you start first. <laughs> wow, you like that? All right, so you share with your friend these three. Once you're done, you change slide, is that okay? Alright, if you're okay, when I count one, two, three, you can start. Ready? One, two, three, let's go. Some people maybe financially be at a young age, right? So generally, there are quite a lot of students here. 
That's interesting, right? Now. I wish I was a student. I mean, I still look quite young. <laughs> Alright? Now, to begin first with that, right? Um, just out of curiosity, anyone of you here, have they ever been to Singapore before? You guys please raise hands, Singapore? And no, no, I haven't been there before. Uh, okay, so let me share with you. Uh, for those who have been there before, do you like going to Singapore? You don't like? No, no, you like. What do you like about Singapore? Oh. <laughs> now, after me, I think it'd be better. <laughs> I, I don't know. Right, uh, but the reason why um, I like Singapore because um, I travel quite frequently to Singapore for training. And one thing I like about Singapore is because it's very systematic. So it's very tourist friendly. You want to go to City Hall, Jurong, you literally can just follow the signboard, circle line, you don't like and you can just follow. So there was one time I was in Sultan Street. And so I was walking right there, uh, nearby city centre, and I want to cross the road. And to me, uh, when you want to cross the road, you use the zebra crossing. Zebra crossing, right? So not a zebra crossing, zebra crossing. So, and I saw Singaporeans, they really line up and they wait for the green light and they will cross. Now, very different from Malaysia. You want to cross the road, you use your hand. And you trust the person going to stop, right? Now, the reason why I share this story every now and then, because I believe that every single place, we have a culture. Everyone say culture. culture. And for us, you want to gonna invest one hour half with us, I also have a culture for you. Would that be okay? Now, to first begin is this one. So, we will have plenty of activities or discussion. I may need to do something. It's because when you involve, you evolve. So learning is in the doing. So we're gonna ask you to do something, draw something, write something. Would that be okay? Uh, come on, is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now number two. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, but however, I recommend you to ask questions towards the end. So if there's anything you can ask me towards the end, you'll still be here. Would that be okay? All right. Huh? Number three is this one. So I might be introducing something new to you, uh, and I want to go deep down more into NLP. All right. So because I believe that success begins with awareness. Everyone say aware. Aware. All right. And last but not least, uh, for us to learn better, we must have high energy. Would that be okay? All right. So I specialize in this one area called NLP. Now, just out of curiosity, any one of you here exposed before or heard before NLP? You guys, please raise your hand. Who first time? First time. Famous for NLP. You guys, raise your hand. Halfway, halfway. No, no, talking to you, talking to you. You heard, you heard, you heard before, right? Uh, how do you know about NLP? What a mark? People talk about NLP, do you? Well, that's interesting. I want to know your friends. <laughs> Alright, yourself. What do you want to know about NLP? For my ex director. Okay, ex director. So it's a. You mentioned before. Right. And yourself? How do you know about NLP? Alright, so is it a training or is it a conversation? Right, so NLP. So basically, um, I'm going to share with you more about NLP. NLP simply means uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So in short, it's about human psychology. Alright, so all, in all NLP studies about human brain. Everyone say brain. brain. So the most important NLP study about the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Okay, so let me just share with you about conscious and unconscious mind. So basically, conscious mind is what you are aware. Everyone say aware. Aware, aware means that you know this and you know that it's happening. Okay, so let me ask you. Are you aware what's the color of the chair you're sitting on now? What color is that? It's gray, so you're aware. But a big part of human brain is called the unconscious. Everyone say unconscious. Unconscious, unconscious means what? You don't know where. It's automated, it's a human habit, it's a human conditioning. Okay, just out of curiosity. Any one of you here not from Kiao, not from Sarango? If that's just please Okay, where are you from? Quickly. I I live in Kenangur, but I'm from Sri Lanka. Salamo. So you're from Sri Lanka? Live in Salamo. Okay, cool. Yes, yourself? Joho. Joho, Joho. Ipo, Ipo. Anyone know from Kiao now? Yes. Different country? Mauritius. Yeah. Uh, Mauritius' favorite destination, right? Mauritius, okay. Where else? Joho. Kampa. Kampa. Alright, now for those who are not from Malaysia originally, have you ever been stuck in the Kiao traffic jam before? Okay, you're laughing because you're from ECSR. <laughs> Just in front of you is a huge jam. So, uh, when you're stuck in a jam, what do you normally do? Like, oh, tell me, when you're stuck in a jam, what do you do? You play with your phone, what else? You check ways. Yeah, check the ETA. Check the ETA, it's always there or it's ending. Right? That's what you do. 
So basically, I'm locally born raised in Kabo, in KL, and every single time when I'm driving stuck in a jet, I like to observe on my left and on my right. And I notice that Malaysian drivers have a few habits. Number one, they play with their phone. They got their phone and they tip. And number two, I also notice that people like to sing. No hands free, no Bluetooth, you know, but they're singing alone in the car and not moving, right? And number three, they like to show hand gesture. Show people certain fingers sometimes that it's jam. <laughs> Alright, and number four, do you also notice when people are stuck in a jam? Some people when they're driving, their elbow go towards the window and they do like this. So this is what we call as human habit. So human habit, we talk about the power of the unconscious mind. Everyone say unconscious. So basically, right, all in all, I learned this concept, uh, let's trace back many, many years ago, right? So I'm just going to walk you through to introduce myself a bit on how I discover NLP. Is that okay? Alright, so it all begins with this one idea. So basically, to make this more interesting, I'm going to show you some pictures in front. So every single time I show a picture, I will ask you some questions. If you want to guess, you can just raise your hand. Is that okay? Okay, yeah? Now, my father grew me up in a very typical Malaysian way. He tell me this one thing. If you want to be successful in life, you do three things. You either be an engineer, or you'll be a doctor, or you'll be a lawyer, same parents, <laughs> right? So what I think was this. That's why I remember every single time, primary school, secondary school, when it comes to the ambition, cheater, cheater, and I wrote this. So can you guess, what did I study in my university? What did I study? Engineering, and to be, to be precise, um, I did chemical engineering. Don't ask me how, but I ended up that path, <laughs> right? So that's what I did. So interestingly, uh, this was what happened to me. So this was in my second year in my university many, many years ago. So does anyone of you here have fear of public speaking? Did you guys please raise your hand? You scared to speak in front of people? Okay, take it, put the hands. Uh, so I was like that. I was very scared of public speaking. And I read a research that says that 74% of people have fear in public speaking. That's fear number one in the entire world. Fear number two is fear of death. Which means if you pick those people to do public speaking or to die, which one will they choose? To die, don't those people, lah. Huh? But in time, that's what they're gonna do. So I was very scared. And I remember this time because I was given a seven minute presentation on this one topic called the law of attraction. Who heard that before? See before? Here is that law of attraction. So it's the, the secret. So I was right there. So I stood in front for seven minutes. I talked about being grateful in life, have a vision board. At the end of seven minutes, this guy stood up. He was my lecturer. Um, I talked from his Facebook page. Anyway, right? So he told me this one thing. Wesley, if you fail to be an engineer, be a motivational speaker. My face exactly like you. So I was very blurred. But his compliment became an enlightenment. So that's how I sparked my first passion towards human psychology. Alright? Of course, after that, uh, I did not fail being an engineer and I continued studying. So I graduated and we go chancellor award uh, from a university called University Technology Petronas. That's where I graduated from, right? And so I was the best student back then. And something I'm really proud to share with people is that I got this award personally by this gentleman here. At the point of time, I didn't know I was going to be Prime Minister again, right? He was just a Chancellor of my university. So then I was, I got this award, so... But I told myself, should I pursue on engineering or should I pursue my passion? Okay, does anybody here ever seen on Facebook before, Snapchat, Instagram? You saw before people's advice say, follow your passion. You guys please raise your hand, saw that before? Follow your passion? Do you believe in that? You don't believe in that? Believe in that? Believe in that? Okay, I believe in that. So I said that, okay, perhaps I should follow my passion, I should keep up my career, and let's do training. That's what I did. So what happened was, I rejected my job offers, and I pursued something I'm keen, passionate about. I want to go into motivation, human psychology, into training and speaking. So what happened was this, I rejected all my job offers, but I never tell my father. So bad advice, right? Don't follow this, right? So what happened was, I remember there was one day, it was 1 o'clock midnight, and I came back home. One o'clock midnight, my father was in the living room. And he was right there reading newspaper, one o'clock midnight. So just to tell you how my father looks like, when he was younger, he was quite handsome. So he looks like Chao Yuan Fan. Yeah, Chao Yuan Fan. Chao Yuan Fan. Yes, you know Chao Yuan Fan? Oh, you know Chao Yuan Fan? Um, 
I'm quite done. <laughs> and he was right there. So when I came there and he said, so when I was there at the time, I said, hi dad, why you haven't said that? Son, sit down. Oh, 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 chill, chill, jala, jala, jala. You sit, stay there, right? So when he said, what happened to your job offer? And I confess, uh, daddy, actually, I rejected all my offers, but I never ever tell you. So I confess to him. And he asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a speaker, a trainer, to travel across the world to inspire people. So can you guess, what did my father say? Did he say yes? He never said yes. He also never said no. He said, you sell it. Then I said, no, that's my dream. So uh, a Chinese family, being a Chinese family, when you argue, you know, things will fly around, things will fly, you know, paper will bounce a bit, so newspaper will fly. So we had a very heated argument until one point of time, he stood up and he asked me this, tell me one more time, engineer or speaker? Speaker. And I said, speaker. He stood up, he banged on the table and he told me this one day, son, you get out of the house now. At that point of time, exactly two o'clock in night, I was being chased out from my house. A lot of people tell me to follow your passion. But what I realize is when you follow your passion, you get kicked out from the house. So that's bad advice. So what happened was I was very confused because I thought that should I follow my passion or should I just find a good high paying salary job? To me, if you fall back to engineering, a uh, fresh graduate pay was quite lucrative. So because I'm supposed to work in MNCs, I got a job offer and they offered me quite high salary as a fresh graduate. So what happened was it was totally very confusing for me. And it was very confusing and lost. And I remember those early days when I first started. Uh, I could barely pay my car loan. I can't even have more than what, 200 ringgit in my savings. So it was totally, I was totally broke. And I remember there was one time I was supposed to travel to Joko Baru, but I could not afford hotel. I was too broke, I was too poor. I had to travel midnight. Nine o'clock in the morning was my talk. I traveled two o'clock in the morning. Because I was too broke, I could not afford hotel. So there I was packing at this one day, 2 o'clock midnight, taking my bag, about to go out from my house. Now my mom waiting for me. And my mom really was inside, you come here. So my mom was there. I thought I'd give one more time to now catch, right? So I still had to stay at home, but I never talked to my father. It's like you go out 7 o'clock in the morning, you come here at 1 o'clock midnight. That's what I do for one t- entire year. So my mom was there saying, Tai, you come here. This time, my mom didn't scold me, she gave me this. And I still keep this paper until right now. This is an ang pao. Inside the ang pao was 400 ringgit. Because my mom knew that I was totally broke. She gave me this one ang pao, and when I received from her, I immediately broke down. And I questioned myself, follow your passion, become like that one. Should I really follow my passion, or should I just give up and really just find a job that pays me well? So this huge dilemma was there, very, very hard for me. So perhaps when you are looking for a solution, the, the universe will align itself. Sometimes it will give you an answer straight up. So the answer came uh, through Groupon. You know Groupon? Okay, Groupon now is called what? It's fake. So back then, um, and I saw this advertisement right here. I don't know how, but it came to my email. So this was in Groupon, and it says this. It says here, Attraction and Dating Workshop. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, what I saw down here was NLP. Now that was the first time I realized that hey, NLP existed in Malaysia. Because I thought that Tony Robbins, those people talk about, it was only in America in the States. But here, Malaysia we have NLP. So I was excited. Because I told myself one thing, if I'm gonna motivate people, but I'm not motivated, what am I doing? If I'm gonna talk to people about sales, but I can't sell, what am I doing? So I need to change myself, agree? So that's the point of time that I went there and it totally changed my whole perspective of life. To begin with, I first noticed this one thing called self-limiting pattern. Everyone say pattern. Which means you know what is sabotaging yourself. As much as I want to be a trainer, I told myself I'm not good enough. So a lot of self-sabotage in my brain happening at the time. So I began to the power of NLP to pick up one by one so that I have more conviction in what I do. So, and I owe my deepest gratitude uh, to these two individuals right here. Uh, Dr. Billy and Miss Kim. So literally, they are the ones who guide me along the way in NLP. And because of how NLP has impacted my life, I am now a certified NLP trainer. 
To be honest with you, in the entire Malaysia, not many of them are certified trainers. I'm probably one of the youngest right there, and on the way to be an NLP master trainer, the youngest in the world. That's what I do. So all in all, NLP talks about three things. So the first thing is to discover yourself. Everyone say discover. It's not exactly what we want. What's our value? What's our belief system? Second, how do we have outcome for ourselves? And third, most importantly, how do we take action from that? So all in all, that's what we learned in NLP. And uh, because of that, I now dedicate how NLP has changed me, and I now train NLP for more than the past seven years. All right? So some of my experiences include um, TEDx. I spoke on TEDx before. This was in 2015. Uh, recently, I spoke on TEDx again. This was in March this year, in UTM. So, and I also appeared on BFM before. This was in Shell. Now, this is very interesting. So I got a chance to work with Shell, right? Uh, so what happened was there was one day, um, I was driving and somebody called me and said, are you Wesley? I said, I'm Wesley. And they say, uh, I said, where are you calling from? He said, Shell. When you get a call from Shell, what's the first thing come to your mind? What's the first thing? You're right, petrol. I said, I need a petrol discount card. Say, <laughs> say, no, I'm calling from Shell HQ. Um, we would like to engage an NLP trainer. Do you train NLP? And I said, yes. In my mind, say, who doesn't like to train Shell? So when I got the assignment, you know what they say? Firstly, you're going to train NLP in Shell, but the group of people that you meet, these people right here, most of them were given BSS. My job there is to have them revive their mindset. And they particularly wanted NLP because they requested for NLP. So what happened was our Shell IT closed down, they shifted outsourced to Bangalore. So and I did certification for them. These are their IT and business managers. All right. Um, different spectrum, I uh, also trained Petronas before. These are the young talents, uh, fresh graduates in Petronas. Uh, in Samsung, where I certified their trainers in NLP. So this was in Takampu, a sales training that I did. All right, so this was in Padini. So we still different, different experience in Honda, and I trained banks as well in persuasion. And these are the talents. And uh, besides training, I also run coaching program, where I take on one-on-one -on -one coaching or a group coaching client where I guide them in terms of presentation skills and public speaking. So these are all students from Sunway University. And they're like 20, 21 years old. So they represent Sunway University to compete in the Malaysian level in investment theses. So talk about investment, what stock to buy and whatsoever, they were all there, right? And, and why I show this picture? Because I'm very proud of this. Because this group of students, they won the Malaysian level, they're the Malaysian champion. They compete in Asia. And they won, they're the Asian champion. And they're the best five teams in the entire world. So NLP has really helped them a lot, all right? So all in all, uh, that's what I've been doing. All right, some of the brands that I've trained. So basically, what's NLP all about? So let me just walk you through a bit of NLP. If you want to write your name, you know, save your phone, you can do it, is that okay? All right, so let me just go to one by one here. So exactly what do you mean by NLP? Now, NLP stands for Neuro, Linguistic Programming. All right? Now, so what's NLP all about? Like what I say, NLP is about the power of the conscious and the unconscious mind. Right? It's about human habits. All right, now, the first thing in NLP, we learn this one thing called neuro. Everyone say neuro. neuro. Now, what is neuro? Neuro is our senses. Okay, so let me ask you, as a human being, how many senses we have? Okay, who believes we got six senses? Raise your hand. Who believes we got five senses? Raise your hand. Who's not sure? Okay, so generally, as a human being, we got five senses. The sixth sense is called the unconscious mind. Yeah? So, how many senses we have? We have five. We got five senses. How many fingers we have? We have your ten. We got ten. We have ten. <laughs> so, we got five senses. We have our sight, we can see, we can listen. We can smell, we can taste, we can touch. The reason why we learn about senses is because uh, we all capture our experience through senses. Okay, let me talk about communication. Uh, Any one of you here, you sell, you are in sales, please you in sales? You are in sales? Okay, now, when you talk to people, do you see them? You see them? Do you hear what they say? Do you touch them? And shake, and shake. Oh, God, God, right. Do you smell them? Yes, in the lead. Your cubicle wants to get one. Do you taste them? 
Uh, please tell me, please tell me more, right? So generally, uh, talking about human interaction, whatever you learn things, we learn through our five senses. So basically, the first thing that we learn is something called neuro. Second, in NLP, we learn this one thing called linguistic. Everyone say linguistic. Now what's linguistic? Linguistic is about the words that we use. Communication. Now just out of curiosity, any one of you here, you are still staying with your parents. You guys please raise your hand. Still staying with your parents? Okay. Oh. They are here in the picture? Yeah. Oh. Wow. So are you a legislator? No, but I'm on the Oh, right, right. Okay. For those who are staying with your parents, do you know sometimes when your parents call your name, you aka aka will know what they want? Okay, for example, when I'm staying with my parents, right, they will say, Leslie. That's the normal talk. They want something from you. Or when they say, Wesley, means something is wrong. But when they say, Wesley Chan Wen Zhen, you are teaching. <laughs> so the words that they use could be the same, but the tonality is the linguistic. That's when a strong signal, a different signal based on communication. But the overall part about NLP, the biggest, when we learn about this one thing called programming. In short, we learn about this one thing called human habit. Everyone say habit. Okay now, I want all of you now uh, to do a slight activity with me. Is that okay? So if you got paper and pen, take it out. Uh, else you can use a phone that you can draw on. Is that okay? Take it out right now. Let's go. Take it out right now. Let's go. Okay. So take out your phone or pick 